You see these little shops all around. Palm readings, fortune tellers, psychics. Some of them imply they can commune with the dead. Some purport to tell the future. You can find them at county fairs, at harvest festivals, or in little booths at concerts. Horoscopes, tarot cards, astrology. So what's the deal with all this stuff from a biblical perspective? Is it really that bad? Are all these things just a little harmless fun, or is there something more sinister at play? How should we as Christians feel about this stuff, and what does the Bible have to say. Let's take a look. Attention, bargain shoppers. So the Bible has many verses which address fortune telling, sorcery, necromancy, things of that nature. One verse which comes to mind is Isaiah 8:19. When they say to you, inquire of the medians and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? So oftentimes when I approach topics on this channel, I try to contextualize things as much as possible. Often we find that people use verses out of context to support modern viewpoints or cultural perspectives that they might hold. But when you start to examine the background of these verses, you can see how easy it is for things to kind of get twisted. For example, when the Bible references cutting your flesh in honor of the dead, this is not the same thing as having a tattoo, despite people's efforts to make it appear that way. Ritualistic prostitution is not the same thing as homosexuality, but it's tempting to manipulate scripture to make it seem that way. With fortune tellers and psychics, though, it's a little bit different. I mean, I have no idea if a modern psychic today would consider themselves to be a necromancer, or a tarot card reader would consider themselves to be a sorcerer, similar to what the Bible would see as a sorcerer 2,000 years ago. But it is different, though, because the motivation and the mechanism behind these practices are still the same. What do I mean by this? When we're applying scripture in our lives today, it's important to understand that some things are different and other things are the same. I hope you were sitting down for that incredibly insightful revelation. I mean, the only thing that branding or scarring in the Old Testament has to do with tattoos is that I guess they both have to do with skin, I guess. They're different things. One is not the other. However, if you look at something like prayer, for example, the trappings may look different. The external things, how long they prayed may have been different, what they said, whether they sat, stood, or knelt. The externalities may look different, but the mechanism is the same. The core of what prayer is today is the same as it was back then. The definition of prayer is, and was, a solemn request for help or expression of thanks to God or an object of worship. What people are trying to accomplish with it. What prayer is remains unchanged. So too is the case with fortune tellers and with psychics. It may look different on the surface. It might be in a shop instead of in a tent. The decor may be more earthy and less idolatry, but the underlying desires remain the same. People who utilize these services are searching for something. Peace, security, healing, maybe from the loss of a loved one, direction, affirmation. And the people who offer these services are doing it for financial gain. It's the same today as it ever was. So there are two points that I think it's important to take away when discussing a topic like this. First, whenever you seek godly things from a source other than God, it can be unhealthy or even dangerous. And two, there is more to this physical world than meets the eye. God freely gives peace to us. But if you try and find that outside of him, say through alcohol or through some vice of some kind, it's going to be unhealthy. God can reveal truths to us and he can give us wisdom through something like prophecy. Or we can try and find that through a psychic. The results may feel similar, but when we seek those things from a source other than God, we can be led astray. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. And in 2 Corinthians we are warned, For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. It's important to note that there is no scripture that implies we can commune with the dead. So be very wary of a psychic that gets information from the deceased. It is very possible they could be being fed that information 
from a demonic spirit. And I get that it's weird to think about that kind of stuff in a modern context, but this is a theology channel. And in the context of theology, the Bible is pretty clear that there is more to existence than just this physical world. And spiritualism without God in the picture is empty, unhelpful at best, and dangerous at worst. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. His lies cause death and destruction. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. So if you look at something like a Ouija board, harmless party game, or gateway to Satan worship? And the answer, I would say, depends. I'm reminded of Paul's words to the Church of Corinth regarding eating food sacrificed to idols. An idol is just a false god. That's something you can think about that the devil might be able to use to draw people away from God. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. He's saying, look, idols are not real gods. And if you eat something that's sacrificed to them as a Christian, it doesn't really matter. God is more powerful. If you play a game or have tarot cards read, it doesn't really have any power over you if you understand that the true power of God dwarfs anything else in this world. But Paul goes on to say, some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. So if you're a Christian and you're going to places like this, and people who aren't Christians see you participating in this stuff, it's going to send the wrong message. If they don't have the understanding that you have, that these things are totally meaningless compared to the power of God, then by participating in these things, you may be helping them to stumble. Paul goes on to say, be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. So in recap, anything you would get from a psychic or a fortune teller or anything like that, God will give to you and it will be better and you will find more peace and more comfort from God than you would any psychic or fortune teller. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please feel free to comment below. I will read all the comments and respond to them as I have time. Also, feel free to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. I'll leave the scripture that we used today in the description below. My name is Adam. This is Bargain Bin Theology. And remember... You get what you pay for.